This is just some insulation I put on it's just because it gets so hot. <laughs> We're trying to educate our kids uh, on where food comes from. Hi there, and welcome back to Hunt and Gather Farms. Today's an exciting day for me. Uh, we're about to get some honey. Uh, I haven't done much this year, so there's three full boxes, and you'll probably see the footage of me inside having a look around. I had a little accident last time, so I dropped and run. Some stuff sort of scattered everywhere. That's pretty normal for me here, because I get so scared. So this has got a, a summer cover on. Ooh, hello. It's a little up the top here. It's hard to tell. Yeah, I've got a bit of overflow here, which is good. I think I'm gonna go in. We'll start with the problem trial down the end. Seeing a lot of bees hanging around. I'm gonna be pretty annoyed right now because I just turned their world upside down. And hopefully they'll chill out soon. So I'm gonna pick this up and just turn it around and call this one my fourth box that I have now. We're gonna lift this onto here. Can't wait. Can't really move them more than a hundred. Um, millimeters a day unless you're going to close it all up and take them away and they come out that day this is the not so fun bit I have to lift these double boxes I had a mate that said to me don't buy a 10 frame box because they get heavy and I went I can do that that shouldn't be a problem and now I'm like hmm I wasn't so smart after all There we go. You can see at the front. Let me get right down in there. So you can see. You can see at the front here, the bees are fr like flying just on the outside. And more in this area where the box was. It's because we've been so used to just flying in, that's where they belong. And their friends are up here, and you might find a bit later that they come out on the outside and wiggle their bums and try and coach them back in to where they've got to land because at the moment they don't know where they they are. They're, not, they're used to flying out of this spot, not this spot. So I'm actually going to rotate these around a little bit. Um, hopefully if that works out, we'll see how we go. Oh, look what we've got here. A little gecko. I can tell the kids. I want to play with him and love him to death. So I'll just let him go on his way. Put the scraper in there, I love using these scrapers. In comes the fun part, or scary part, if you mean. Oh, it's actually a lot of weight in that, it might actually look full than I thought. It's actually heavy, I'm not going to lie. Oh my goodness. There's a lot of honey in there. Because we go through a lot of honey. I'll get a couple boxes. They'll get me around the 100 kilo mark after what I've already got so far this season. So it'd be nice to get that out. We go through so much honey. Mainly I did with my coffee, I'm not gonna lie. Here comes the cavalry. Alright, we got a couple of grumpy ones coming around now. So what I'm gonna do is put a bit of smoke over the top. 
Okay, hey, you're okay. Now's yeah, the time for me to get out. And I'm happy. Uh, I have got the clearing boards on there. You can see between the 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 top box and the next one down, you can see that there's a, a little board, and I'll show you a bit more about that later. Um, I just thought I'd show you a bit around my height. So I haven't got any gear on, as you can see, and I'm anaphylactic. So I won't be getting too much closer without a suit on. Uh, I've got a good suit that covers me well so I don't get stung to save a trip from the hospital, which is always a good thing on a Saturday. Last thing I'll do is be stuck in hospital. So yeah, we take as much care as we can to get this the honey out without any, any hassle. It's only ever been an issue maybe one or two times in the past. And one time was, I actually dragged the garden hose up the front of the hive and you can actually see um, there's bees are on the outside and they were a little bit aggro about that and they attacked me. I'm probably, I would say about, well, about a meter and a half away from the front of the hive and slightly to one side. And I seem to find that um, they're very calm, they're cool, there's no issues, they're just buzzing around. Uh, I won't go in front of the beehive because what happens is they've got like a flight path that they always fly in and out and uh, they'll run into me. And that's normally what happens with bees, they'll run into you, they're not necessarily attacking you. Um, you will know if they're attacking because they'll, they'll hit you and then they'll come back out and they'll try and hit you again. That's, that's when they're grumpy bees. Uh, and so all my bees at the moment are actually pretty calm. But the plan today is just to get the top box off and I'll show you this top I'll actually show you the, the whole idea of the hive so you'll see that bottom box section this this actual um, this has got four sections to it and that's just because I've been so lazy this year well, not lazy it's been really busy and um, what happens is they run out of room in there so when they fill them up full of honey there's no room for the bees and then they start hanging around on the outside a lot so what I've done is I just keep adding ones to it. It's like giving them a little project to keep them interested. So this bottom section is where they call that the brood box. And that's where all the, uh, well that's where the queen is. So the queen's in there, down the very bottom. So they go in and out through this hole. Okay, so we're at the point now of taking the top off and um, have a bit of a look in there and see what else we can find. So we're hoping now that this top one doesn't have many bees in it. I'm not going to use smoker now. I just want to try and get in there without the smoker. Um, that's just what I choose to do when I'm getting the honey off. Because we've been through a separate, the, uh, yeah, the actual separator or the clearing board. So hopefully there's not many left in there. I'm not sure how we're going to go. If they get too savage, I'll close it back up and we'll smoke them and settle them all back down. But ideally, we uh, uh, we want to sort of keep the smoke out of it for now if I can. Uh, what do you do if, if you do bees? I'd like to know what your thoughts on that uh, when you're collecting honey. Hang around, we're going to have a bit of a look in there and see if there's very minimal amount of bees left. Oh, it smells good honey. Yeah. Should I climb up there? Yeah. Okay, so here's my little assistant area. You've probably seen it before in our um, our chook video. Yeah. So if you, you have, haven't, if you have not seen it, then my name's Aria. Yeah, so that's Aria. Let's go have a look. All right, so they're pretty noisy. The sun's out, so they're pretty happy just to be out and about. They like sun a lot. Yeah, they do like the sun. All right, let's get this off, shall we? Get them on the outside already. Yeah. You want me to hold them? Ooh. 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 We'll hold that from the barrier. Just hold that there. Good job. All right. Okay, so we've still got bees in here. That's Not never exciting. No. Uh, I don't know what's going on there. There's a few deadies on the outside, obviously. There's also yeah. A bit of wax on the top. I've got this upside down, which is not cool. Um, let's just have a bit of a look. Why are they all dead ones? I don't know. Maybe they stung you? No, they didn't sting me. Alright, let's go in. Have a bit of a look. So, our plan is to get all these out. Let's have a 
Oh, look at that. There's not that many bees in there. No. That's really good news. Yeah, that is. But there's lots of so ants what we're in gonna, there. Yeah, what we're going to end up with now. Oh, there's two. See, the ants don't normally hang around in there if there's lots of bees. Because the bees just, just push them out. They clear out. They keep their, their little house pretty clean. They don't like you can ants. see these bees are just rocking up now. They're just trying to rob now. They're not really probably part of this hive anyway. So, find that thing. Yep. <laughs> All right, so this is going to be a bit of work here because we've got a bit of um, bridging, bridging wax here, a bridging hoe across each one of them. So we're going to cut that off as we remove them. What's your favourite thing about the bees, Aria? Um, helping and okay. holding stuff for you. Helping and holding stuff, okay. Or some ants off as yep. much as I can get off. Yep, so I'm going to use a special horse hair brush. Like a special type. Yeah. Try not, try not to touch the bees because I don't want them to sting yep. me. So a special tool that we get in there. Look at Well. If Dad gets stung by some again, then he might die because he's allergic to them. Alright, here we go. She's not happy. They're all not happy. Alright, so we're trying to be the last open. Can you hold that for me, Ari? Wow, there's lots of honey. <laughs> this is packed full of honey. This is actually really exciting here. It's so exciting. Can't wait for this. Well, well, that is actually heavy. I think what's going to happen here is we're going to rip a bit out. And can I eat some? The way that we have a calm hive is to have a new queen every every few years. So uh, we get rid of the old queen and replace her with a new one, and that helps settle them down and keeps her. She seems to keep them all under control, uh, which is what we we try and do. Being in a residential block. 1600 squares we uh, we can't afford to have angry bees because it'll cause angry neighbors so <laughs> that's what we try and do uh, nothing like a jar of honey over the neighbor's fence every now and then keeps them happy as well I'm pretty new at it really I've been doing it for about seven years but I'm not like an absolute guru on it I know how to sort of look after them a bit uh, I've got a mate Grego who's a, a fiery as well and he sort of got me involved and he didn't actually do anything in particular to get me involved, he just showed me what was happening and I actually fell in love with the whole idea of, of the bees and the concept of it. And the only thing that's the, the put off really is the anaphylactic side of things, it's a bit scary. So when I get my gear on I wrap myself up pretty tight. Meg stays out of this, she doesn't really like the bees that much. Uh, there was an incident once before where a bee was flying around Meg's face and she thought it was a blowfly and she actually whacked it and she whacked the bee straight up her nose. It was a cracking shot. She whacked it up its nose up her nose and it actually stung her pretty bad up her nose. So um yeah that wasn't much fun for her. So she sort of checks out when it comes to the beehive stuff. So I'm on my own. Um, but Aria has actually got a little suit now so you see her in a cute little suit and she'll be here to help out uh, as we're going through this. So as you can see, they're pretty chilled. They're very noisy. But they weren't really attacking me. I'm pretty happy. Like this. There you go. That is a lot of honey. Oh. A few bees in here. Oh yeah. Okay, so we're inside, and this is the bit that Meg's hates. We find that we've got bees inside, and I will show you guys how we get the honey from here into our tongue. All right. So now we're inside, and we've got our box full of honey in here, and I'm going to go through the process of spinning it off. Now I want to just say that my way is not the only way. Uh, my mate Grego actually does it a little bit different. 
uh, and I'll explain as we go along the different ways. So what we have here, um, this is a big cylinder here, this is a big stainless steel tin. This is called the uh, spinner. And this is actually how we get the honey off. You can see we've just washed it out, it's all nice and clean. Um, and the spinner, basically the way it works, you turn this handle here and it spins around. So what we do is we put these frames in and we take the capping off it and then we'll spin it. And then from there, what we do is we will filter it out and I'll show you as we go along. But this is the filter setup that we use. This is a coarse strainer. And it's just fine strainer that goes through there. Uh, what we've done is just cut a bucket uh, lid out so it fits nice and snug so there's no contaminants or anything able to get in there. Just make sure that it's all nice and clean when it comes through just so we can have the best type of honey. Okay, so I'm just going to show you one way of how we do their hives or spin off our frames. I'm just going to frame out and just show you a couple of little things. So you can see there's a couple of some empty holes here. It's okay, it's not the end of the world. Um, we've got a bit down the bottom as well. This, this is all capped. Um, it's, it's sort of crept out a little bit more than it normally does. So what happens is a uh, bee comes along and they fill all this with honey. And then when it's full, they'll cap it off with this wax. So that's what you see here is wax. And so we have to take that off. So the way that I get it off is I use a special comb, as you can see there. And what we do is just scrape it and just basically crack the top of it. Uh, just basically come along here. And we start up in the top corner and basically just scratch it like that. Just scratch, it's quite easy. I just give it a light scrape when I do it. And uh, it just lets the honey starts coming out. You can see it coming out straight away because I've just ripped up the surface. So we just scrape this off. Just make more mess on Megsy's table. But she understands it's this time of year, this is what happens. So this goes in one side of the centrifuge. Alright, on to the next one. People get a little bit funny about bees and taking all their honey. Um, taking the honey, yes, if you, um, you've got to leave enough for them so they're not struggling over winter, uh, and especially in the colder times. And we've got a responsibility to make sure that they're happy and we don't just take it all and rob it. So what you can see, I'm going to spin this around now and I want you to see the, the honey and the wax that gets thrown up against the edge. You see a bit of the light. done one side of each of these frames by spinning it. So what we want to do now, you can see on that, there's a little bit left that I didn't get. And um, depending on how I feel, I might even have another go at that a bit later. But we flip it over now, and then we put the outside um, back in there again. Even the little blonde bees come around and we're doing the honey. I'm trying to get as much honey comb as I can. It's a nice full little container there. So clean up a bit and then we'll go on to filtering out the honey. That done. That's all the frames spun off. There's just a few things that we have to do now in the way of housekeeping. 
So these are empty now, there's nothing in them, but there's a lot of wax on the outside up the top. And it's just good keep housekeeping to make sure that they're it's actually nice and clean. So what we just do now, we go across the top here and scrape all the wax off just to make it a nice neat one for next time the bees go in there. Alright, so that's that done. Um, just cleans it up a little bit and just makes it a bit more neater for next time when they go back in the hive. So what's going to happen with this frame now, uh, this box, this box is going to go underneath the other box right now uh, and we're going to put the, the, the uh, clearing board underneath it and clear the next one and then this one's got room in it for the bees to come down. So that's what's going to happen with this box now. If this wasn't going to go back on the hive, um, I recommend um, that you take these frames out and you put them in the freezer. Put them in a big garbage bag and just wrap them in the freezer for a couple of days and it just kills any eggs or lava from wax moth or anything like that. Because that's what we want to try and do is just prevent disease in the beehive. And just by doing that, it just makes it a lot better. So I've got a bit of wax left over. Um, that's not going to get wasted. Jade's got a little project a bit further down the track for us to make some candles and wax wraps and that sort of stuff. All right, this is the exciting part. All the hard work from the bees for the last few months and uh, a little bit of time for me. And uh, this is where we're at. Let's just open up the tap and see what we've got. Look at that. That's just pure honey. It's beautiful. Look at that. It's amazing. And that just goes through the double stage strainer. And we'll see how it turns out. Just keep it going nice and slow just so it doesn't overflow all over the place. So from here, what we do, we use this mainly for ourselves. We don't use sugar in our house too much. As, well, as little as possible anyway. So what we do instead is we use honey in a replacement. So all our coffees, um, has honey instead. It tastes beautiful and there's nothing like the taste of honey straight from a hive. Uh, if you get it from the shop and feel like you get it ripped off, you're not really enjoying the benefits um, and the health benefits of pure honey. So this is the way to go and it's exciting and we do this in our house. Uh, it's just part of us being self-sufficient really. Uh, it's just another thing that we're trying to do to stay food prepared I guess. We're trying to educate our kids uh, on where food comes from. So this just shows uh, how much work goes into actually preparing their food and, and stuff for them. Uh, and so it just also is teaching them where their food comes from. So today's society we just find that people don't have a clue or they don't even think about where their food's coming from. So this just sort of helps our family to reflect on the work that's involved and the animals that are used for our everyday living for food. So in the coming months, um, you'll probably see a few little um, shorts or episodes where Megs will talk about the honey that we use for our medicines and our, uh, how we use it on cuts and abrasions and stuff like that. Uh, it's an ancient um, fact that, you know, they always use honey to help repair wounds. And so, um, there's something that we try and use to try and avoid band-aids and all that sort of stuff. So we find a lot of benefit in it and I uh, hope this probably opens your eyes up a little bit more to what you use it for other than just buying it from the shop. I think that's about it for now. Um, I hope you've got a lot out of this. Uh, this is always exciting for me, getting lots of honey out. And it's just getting ready for the winter months and having heaps of stocks is always exciting. So if you found it interesting, I hope you subscribe to us, like and share it, and get it out there for everyone to see. Uh, that's it for us, from our family to yours. God bless.